Up until now, we were talking about data collection, cleaning and processing. So now let's talk about the next step, which is visualizing the data. In today's video, we're going to deep dive into three powerful visualization libraries of Python. That is matplotlib, seaborn and plotly. Each of these libraries brings a unique set of features and capabilities to the table. Whether you are a beginner or a seasoned data specialist, this comprehensive guide will empower you to choose the right tool to every visualization need that you have. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting video. While talking about visualization, we're going to start with the most well-known library of them all, which is matplotlib. Now matplotlib provides the foundation for creating a wide range of static visualization from basic line plots to complex heat maps. So let's explore how we can harness its power. To begin with, I'm going to import the data, which I've already done. I'm using a data set from Yahoo Finance, which is an Apple stock data for the last seven days. You can download the data from the link in the description if you want to follow along. Now, you know the deal. We have to first import our libraries that we would require. In case you are not using Google Colab and using Jupyter Notebook, then please remember to, first of all, install the libraries by using pip install and then import it into your environment. Now, since I am using Google Colab, I'm going to directly import it because it's already been installed. Now, after importing all these libraries, I'm going to just copy paste the path from here. Okay. And also create my data frame. Now let me just quickly show you the data set. So in this data, we have a date column, open highest point of for a stock for a day, lowest closing price, adjusted closing price, and then volume. Before we move forward, I'm going to convert this date column to a date time format. Okay. Once that is done, let's start creating our matplotlib charts to start with. Let's start creating a histogram. Okay. So I'm going to say plt dot hist. Now, let me just quickly explain the parameters that I've used in plt dot hist. The first one is the column that I'm going to use to create that histogram. So for this, I've used the closing price column. Bins is nothing but the width of the data points that I'm going to present in that particular histogram. I'm defining a standard color for my chart, which is purple, and then the alpha value, which represents the transparency of a certain chart. So if I run this as it is, it's going to give me a normal chart like this. However, as you see, I do not have any labels in this chart or titles in this chart. In order to add labels and titles, we have to use certain additional methods. The first one is to add a label in my X axis. So I'm going to use plt dot X label. Now, if you see, it has mentioned value here and you can use any text that you want. Next one is to add a label in the Y axis. So I'm going to use plt dot Y label. Let's say frequency. So it has added that label here. Then let's add a title to my chart. So plt dot title. So it has added a title here. Now as a best practice, while you're displaying a chart, it's advisable to write plt dot show. So I'm going to just write that. So this is how you create a histogram using the matplotlib library. Now let's create a bar plot using matplotlib. So I'm going to say plt dot bar, and then I'm going to use the date column as my X axis and close column as my Y axis. And then I'm going to assign a color, let's say green. And then if you choose, you can use the same methods that we used above, which is, you know, add a label to my X axis, add a label to my Y axis, add a title, right? However, for now, I'm just going to continue with just plt.show and run this. And as you see, it has displayed my data in a bar chart now. 
The next one is a line chart. So for line chart, you need to write plt dot plot and then give it a column for x axis again date column for y axis and then this time i'm going to give it a label as well and again to customize this chart you can use x label y label title one thing that we have not seen so far is a legend so let's add that and then plt dot show so if you see it has displayed my data like this I would like to also mention two important methods that you can use when your X label is overlapped with each other. So right now everything is displaying properly, but at times it happens that when you create a chart, the X label are overlapped. In order to resolve that, you can use two things. First one is plt dot X ticks rotation is equal to 75. What this will do is it will rotate my x label at an angle so as you see now it is displaying my x axis like this okay another thing that you can do is if you're dealing with a date column then you can use this plt dot gcf dot auto format x date okay now if i run this this will also automatically adjust my X labels to format everything properly. Now the next library we're going to cover is Seaborn. Now this library is designed to make your visualization more aesthetically pleasing with minimal effort. To start with, we're going to create a histogram using Seaborn. If you remember at the top, we have initialized our Seaborn library as SNS. So we're going to use that SNS dot hist plot. Okay. So this is how you create a histogram data is equal to df i'm going to use the close column here bins is equal to 10 that is the width of my series that i'm going to create and then color let's assign a purple color here now again you can use the other methods like x label y label title i'm going to skip that however i'm going to just use plt.show and then run this now as you see as compared to the histogram created by matplotlib this is a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Moving on to a bar plot, I'm going to use SNS dot bar plot. X is equal to, now I'm going to use date. Y is equal to, I'm going to use close. And data is equal to DF. Color, let's assign a new color here, green. And then PLT dot show. Finally, in Zbon, this is how we create a line chart. So SNS dot line plot X is equal to date column. Y is equal to close column. And data is equal to our data frame, which was DF. And then PLT dot show. Perfect. Now that we have covered the basic charts in matplotlib and Zbon, let's take a leap into the interactive world of Plotly. Now this library specializes in creating interactive visualization that allow user to explore and interact with data in real time. Now this is perfect for creating web-based dashboards and reports. To start with, let's create a bar chart. So we're going to start with a name. You can assign any name to it. Now if you remember, we have initialized the Plotly library with the initials px so we're going to use that px dot bar because we're creating a bar chart and df this is the data frame that we're using x equal to date y is equal to close we can add a title here and then finally i'm going to say fig dot show okay with just two lines of code it has created an interactive chart with much better visualization than before. Now the important part here is this chart is interactive. So there are a few options. If you see here, you can zoom into the chart. We can also highlight a certain portion of the chart like this and then zoom into that so that you can play around with the data and dig deep into the charts. Now let's create a 3D scatter plot. So I'm going to use fig is equal to px dot scatter underscore 3D and then df x equal to date which is my x-axis y is equal to close 
and then I'm going to assign a Z axis as well. In this case, I'm going to use volume column. And then let's assign a title. Finally, fig dot show. Now, if you see it, this chart is completely interactive. User can interact with this chart and see this chart from various angles. Although there may be better use cases for this chart in different type of data. Now let's create a line chart with Plotly. So fig is equal to px dot line and then df x equal to date y is equal to I'm going to use two columns here just so that we can compare both columns together. I'm going to use closing column here and the open column here. Assign a title. And then write fig dot show. Now, if you see, we've created a line chart comparing the opening price and the closing price of share on each dates. And if I want, I can zoom into a certain part of the chart and see further details. Now, finally, for those who have stayed till the end, this is how you create a heat map using all three libraries. So for this, I'm going to create a data using NumPy library. So I'm going to import NumPy. Okay. And I'm going to create a random data. Once that is done, I'm going to create the charts using all three libraries. Now this is how you can create a heat map using matplotlib. So plt dot im show data cmap equal to viridis. Okay. Now it is just color palette that we have. So we're going to use that color palette and we can have additional methods here. So plt dot color bar. This will add a color bar to the right of the chart. We can have the title and then write plt dot show. Now if you see, this is how you create a heat map using matplotlib. Okay. Now the same thing can be achieved using a seabone library. So I'm going to say SNS dot heat map data C map is equal to again where it is. I'm going to skip the title part or other methods for now. And I'm going to say plt dot show. So if you see the line of code that I've written here is much smaller. However, uh, the output is more or less the same. Okay. Finally, a heat map using plotly. I'm going to say fig is equal to px dot im show data color underscore continuous scale is equal to where it is. This is equivalent to the color map parameter that we have given earlier. And then I'm going to say fig dot show. Okay. So it created a chart. However, because we are using plotly, this is interactive. I can select this and zoom into that particular portion of the chart. So now that you have seen all the visualization, which library to choose is completely up to you. Matplotlib is for foundational static plots. However, Seaborn is for quick and beautiful statistical insights and Plotly on the other hand is for dynamic interactive visualizations. So depending on your project goals, you can use either one of them or even combine all these libraries together to maximize your productivity. So that's a wrap on today's journey into visualization using matplotlib, seaborn and plotly. Each of these libraries plays a crucial role in the data visualization ecosystem. Armed with these knowledge, you are ready to visualize data like a pro and present your insights effectively. So if you found value in this content, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.